Bolton Street Baptist Church, the first mass meeting here in the city of Savannah, March 20th, 1960, four days after that sit-in at Levy's department store. W.W. Law, Wesley Wallace Law would stand in that pulpit and tell the people of Savannah that they weren't gonna take it anymore and the protest began and lasted for 15 months. These credit cards are replicas of Levy's department store credit cards that were thrown at his feet because that's where that protest began and those young people were arrested. Mr. Law was brilliant, so when the museum opened, the names on these cards are local people who became members of the Ralph Mark Gilbert Civil Rights Museum. These are some of the churches uh, featured here where the mass meetings took place. This is First African Baptist Church. First African Baptist Church on Franklin Square, the church where Reverend Dr. Ralph Mark Gilbert reorganized the NAACP here in Savannah from 1941 to 1942, and where he immediately began a vigorous campaign for increased black voter registration and political action, better schools, and an end to unequal public services and police brutality. Dr. Gilbert also organized the largest NAACP youth council in the nation, consisting mainly of the Beach Kyla High School student body. This is Asbury over on Abercorn. And back here, you can see St. Philip AME Church. This church was an ideal location for the NAACP weekly mass meetings. Its pastor, Reverend Benjamin Gay, was one of the best speakers in the civil rights movement. He led the integration of city buses and served on the integrated Savannah Transit Authority. AME presiding elder J.S. Bryan and Reverends A.J. Martin and F.D. Jadon were among the favorite of the mass meeting speakers. Dr. J.W. Jordan and his wife, Dr. Abby Jordan, gave invaluable NAACP service at the St. Philip AME Church. And over here, First Bryan Baptist Church. First Bryan had a great history. It was Third African at one time, and from Third African Baptist Church was Reverend Alexander Ellis. Reverend Alexander Ellis was actually one of the men who met with Sherman, and he becomes the pastor of the Nicholson Borough Baptist Church out on Savannah's South Side. What a great history. Those African people who came after freedom from St. Catherine's Island, who eventually would settle in that area and purchase land that becomes Nicholson Borough. And in the centerpiece of that area is still that historic church today. Right here, we have our own mass meeting in the church theater. Every 30 minutes here at the Ralph Mark Gilbert, we show the video that talks about uh, the civil rights movement in Savannah. Along the walls here, you can see what it would have looked like, a picture of those people who were gathered at First African Baptist Church. We have the ministers here along the walls. We also had uh, among the leadership, Mr. Law didn't do it all alone. He had the vice president, of the NAACP as a helpmate, and his name was Reverend Frederick Douglass Jadon. And I mention him because he was my grandfather's brother. He was my granduncle. And I didn't know until I came to work here at the Ralph Mark Gilbert Civil Rights Museum that he was as active as he was in the movement. In 1968, I integrated St. Vincent's Academy, and it was probably because he told my mother I could go there, but I could never become Catholic. So I always salute him whenever I talk about the movement in the church. He was the pastor of the, of the mother church of, of Georgia, which was called uh, St. Philip Monumental, which is today over on Park Avenue in Jefferson. St. Philip Monumental AME Church, the Reverend F. D. Jadon, the pastor and longtime NAACP leader, could be depended upon to obtain ministerial endorsement of important civil rights campaigns. Reverend Jadon and Bishop A.J. Scott conducted prayers each morning before students were driven to newly integrated schools. We did the, we celebrated our 20 years recognizing and preserving the civil rights uh, contribution of Georgia's oldest African-American community, which is Savannah. But this year, what we're celebrating with our silver anniversary is to pay homage to what happened 25 years ago. So we will celebrate it that day in basically the same way. Uh, they marched from First African Baptist Church down to the museum and had a great opening for this museum. 
and we want our community to come back and join us for that celebration.